Um, please give up next for our wonderful historian, Gary Flynn. For the last time, say aw. 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 As Rawside is going on hiatus. So this is the last read along from Broadside. Now, uh, I'll pause while everyone gets a copy of Broadside so they can read along uh, with me. I seem to be nursing a little cold, so uh, you can decide should I skim through this article or should I read the whole thing? Read your favorite part of it. Do what you got to do, Gary. Yeah. Okay. Do what you feel inside you. Okay, it's not too long. Uh, page. Okay, we're on page 18 of the issue of Broadside. It's the piece called Forgotten Dread Lake. Everyone ready? Yeah, page 18. Well, the last page. Yeah. The next to the last page. Yeah. So here is Forgotten Thread Lake. There are two illustrations uh, on this uh, article. Uh, I sent the photo so they can be inserted uh, in the uh, Queer Wine Show. That will be uh, online and eventually at Comcast Channel 17. shows the, the Thread Lake Dam, uh, and the other shows, uh, well, an almost abandoned Thread Lake, with the exception of uh, someone uh, operating a, a radio-controlled boat. So here's the uh, piece called Forgotten Thread Lake. This is the story of a waterway close to downtown Flint you would think would be heavily used when the weather is warm, but over the years, fate would prove otherwise. Back in the early 1800s, industry required power from steam, wind, water, or animals. Thread Creek fed Swartz Creek, which, led, which fed the Flint River. The first dam on Thread Creek was built to power a sawmill built by Rufus Stevens, but this dam was close to the Grand Blank of Flint. The current dam, which greeted Thread Lake southeast of downtown, was built in the 1880s. It's located at the curve where Clifford Street becomes Flipping Cop Boulevard. It was used both for recreation and industry. The most notable industry served by Thread Lake was the ice industry. Ice was harvested at the surface of Thread Lake, which was kept in insulated ice houses, which kept the ice frozen all summer. The most notable ice company using Thread Lake ice was the Will Danger and Flanders Ice and Coal Company, which was founded in 1904. Uh, with his partner, Francis Flanders. The film also co sold coal, wood, and coke for fuel, as well as ice. In those days, ice houses were insulated by sawdust, which made them highly flammable. Around 1894, another ice business along Thread Lake lost a number of ice houses to fire. In 1909, the World Dang and Flanders ice business lost three ice houses to fire on the same site. The 1909 fire was blamed on either boy smoking or plain branches. The boy was severely burned trying to stop the firewall. New, new ice houses were quickly built, and it was decided to also build a plant allowing for the manufacturing of ice with refrigeration equipment to gain the need for Thread Lake ice. Tragically, William Waldanger committed suicide by a gunshot to his head at one of the ice houses on November 5, 1912, at age 47. At the time of Waldanger's death, the ice business he co-owned was grossing $250,000 annually. Waldanger was buried at Avondale Cemetery. It's the state and plan to sold the ice business, which became the Flint Spring Water Ice Company. Plan to send in the Swornigas business. Plan to die on January 2nd, 1948, 62, was buried at Flint Cemetery. By 1918, Flint Spring Water Company was located at 2125 South Saginaw Street. It evolved into the City Ice and Fuel Company at the same address by 1928. Later known as City Products Corp., it went out of business around 1977. 1979 was a brief attempt and adapted for use when the Ice House Cocktail Lounge opened up. It only lasted a year. A couple of years later, the former ice business was destroyed in the suspected arson fire. The recreational use of Thread Lake was advanced by the opening of the Lakeside Park and the Houston Park in 1913. 
The main attractions that day were High Wire Active Band Performance, James Hardy, and the Boost Band. Admission was 10 cents for adults, but for children. Lace High Park offered vaudeville entertainment, band concerts, dancing, and 4th of July fireworks, along with the rides, which by 1920 included seaplane rides, giant roller coasters that went over the lake, the lavish merry ground, and canoe. Baseball games were also played. The noble House of David Religious Coming and Baseball team from Benton Harbor with its long haired and bearded members played there in 1931. Promotions and amateur concerts was also held. A beer coupe was given to a lucky patron in 1927. The Lakeside Park's Sweetie Dance since 1930, men were charged 50 cents and women were admitted free. Lakeside Park closed permanently after its final day of the season on Labor Day in 1931 when an actual wedding was held along with the big parade. The ongoing effects of the Great Depression, along with competition from Rival Flint Park across town, took its toll on Lakeside Park. The owners of the closed park received an offer for it, but it held out for more money. It should have taken the offer because the city of Flint took possession of the park with back taxes. The city tore down the amusement park structures and annexed it with adjacent to Lake Park. The combined park was renamed McKinley Park on July 4, 1942, in memory of former Flint Mayor and longtime Parks Administrator George F. McKinley. The entrance at the corner of Pier Avenue and Collingwood Parkway still have portions of the old Lakeside Park gate standing. As time went on, Third Lake had become increasingly isolated, making public access hard to find. Construction of I-475 along the lake's western shore inhibited access, forcing those who wished to enjoy the lake to take one of the side streets from South Side Hill Street between the I-475 overpass and Applegate Chevrolet. Lake. McKinley Park surroundings look rather dismal indeed with simple frame houses, often in poor condition. And taking in the park, the only person used to the lake, as I mentioned, was operating a radio-controlled boat from shore. Third Lake also shows the social economic divide of the Flint area. As Collingwood Parkway becomes Lakewood Drive, going around the southern shore of the lake, the shallow lake looks stagnant and dismal with many lily pans. Also, the simple houses on the southwest part of the lake give way on Lakewood Drive to larger and nicer homes as reprised by the private Flint Golf Club, where Felicity go for fun, recreation, and fine dinners. After I wrote this piece, uh, I found an article showing a group of people during the winter months enjoying the lake, uh, motorcycle ice racers. And there's a video on YouTube uh, that uh, shows them in action. So at least one group of people have discovered Red Lake. Now, uh, I decided what to uh, read about for next month. You probably notice uh, if you pass by Bank of America branch branches that the signs are changing because next month uh, the local Bank of America branches will become Huntington Bank branches, so, which uh, allowed me to uh, rewrite a piece I wrote. Uh, it, was, it was in your magazine, which I think was called uh, uh, One Bank, Five Names. Uh, they rejected my proposed title, which was The History of National Bank of Flint, scratch that line, Michigan National Bank, scratch that line. Standard Federal Bank, scratch that line. LaSalle Bank, scratch that line. Bank of America, scratch that line. Huntington Bank. <laughs> yeah. I think that would be a more entertaining title. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so, uh, watch. so uh, I hope you'll uh, be here when I talk about the, the one bank with several names. Uh, as I uh, also make updates in my head, uh, noting by that time I read it that the banks will be behind the bank branches. Thank you very much. All right. Yeah! Thank you, thank you.